hello and welcome to the first video on this channel which just happens to be my japan vlog we spent two weeks in japan we were in tokyo kyoto and osaka i got mostly footage of tokyo so that's what this video will be plus a little bit of kyoto and kobe at the end As soon as we arrived in the airport, there were already so many things that I was excited about. There was this drink vending machine that you can get hot and or cold drinks, and I got an ice matcha and it was delicious. I was already confused on how it was so good. We got in in kind of the late evening, so we took the Narita Express to our Airbnb, which we also had to take the metro for, and my first metro experience was uh, interesting, but eventually I got the hang of it and it was really easy. That's something that I really came to love about Japan, is it's so easy to get around via public transit and you can just literally go anywhere. We were really, really tired that night and also were not ready to have to try and order places. So we went to this place called Ichiran, which they give you a little booth, it's all individual seating, and you just put in your order via a vending machine kind of thing, and then you get your ramen. I really like this place. We ended going back multiple times because it's just quick and easy and also really good. After that, we got Tayaki and went to bed. We were super, super tired. We started our first official day off in Harajuku, which I think in retrospect was definitely my favorite area of Tokyo. I really like this neighborhood and there's so much to do and to see and to buy. Our first stop was Kittyland where they have so much stuff. I mainly was looking for Kirby and Mippy stuff, but they have so many other characters at this place. Got it this time? I think I really got it this time. Like, oh, I think if I go oh, for him, because he's like loose now, you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. Like, there's no way it doesn't just like knock him in like your happenstance. My depth perception is a little long. Does. Just know it is a common theme for this video, for us to be attempting claw machines and losing because I'm convinced that they're all rigged. I, this is the conspiracy theory that I believe. The amount of stuff I got is ridiculous, and the next video on the channel will probably just be me showing y'all everything I got. In your mind. You can think about things, make believe things. All you have to do is think about them, and they'll grow. This tonkatsu place is the best food I think I've ever eaten. It is so delicious. I had a lot of katsu in Japan and this was just by far the best pork katsu I've ever had and had while I was there. Checked out the Shibuya Crossing, which obviously, you know, you have to go and see. We wanted to see it during the day and at night, so we kind of stayed in this area and met up with our friend that actually lives in Japan for school. This is the first Pokemon Center that we went to, and we went to a lot. I tried to go to the Pokemon Center in every city that we visited. There's a few in Tokyo, and I think we went to two of them. We also went to the Nintendo store, which was great. We ate this place maybe three times while we were in Tokyo. It's a conveyor belt sushi place and it is so delicious. 
I really wanted to try sea urchin, so when we were in Japan, I thought, why not? And um, I really did not like it, but the chef was excited when I ordered it, so I pretended that I loved it so much. We got an early start most days and just had 7-Eleven breakfast because it was so cheap and quick and convenient. And if you've ever heard anything about people sharing their Japan trips online, everyone talks about the food at 7-Eleven. It does live up to the hype, I think, especially the Tamago Sando, which I had almost every day for breakfast. The sando and these little margarine maple syrup filled pancakes are just to die for. Again, I ate them almost every day, every morning. One of our day trips was going a little bit outside of Tokyo to the Gotokuji Temple, which is a temple dedicated to the cat. Legend has it that the Lord of Hakone Domain was invited to the temple by a cat beckoning him at the gate, and a thunderstorm suddenly broke out, and the Lord was impressed by the good luck the cat brought him at the right time. There are over 10,000 lucky cat figurines here, which was crazy. And you can also buy your own and leave it or take it if you'd like for good luck. We went to Tsutaya Books, which has everything from magazines to books to stationery to hundreds and hundreds of dollar pens, but everything in there was super cool. At the end of this day, we went to a pig cafe, which it was a very long walk to get there from the bus we took, but it was very worth it. There were legitimately like 13 pigs on us at once. Another sort of mini day trip I enjoyed was to this bonsai museum, which was amazing. They have bonsais that are thousands and thousands and thousands of years old. We had a really nice guy be our tour guide, and he's actually a student there, and he was telling us just about everything that goes into the bonsais and the way that they set them up to grow specific ways. It was way cooler than I expected. Obviously, I knew it was going to be great, but it really was special. Then we went to the Sky Tree for one of my most anticipated things that I really wanted to do while we were in Japan, which was visit the Kirby Cafe. Now, while I did not get a reservation at the cafe because we missed the appointment window by 20 minutes, I was able to get takeout, which was perfectly fine because I really wanted the Kerberger and it's takeout anyways only, so.
While we waited for that, we went to the Kirby Cafe store, which had so much good stuff. And again, the next video on this channel, I will show y'all everything I got from here and in Japan in general. Also in the Sky Tree was the second Pokemon Center that we went to, and I got this Perugly. We got some Tongaloo because I've seen it literally everywhere, and Will was the first to try it. We both neither have ever had it, and he really liked it, but I'm not gonna lie, I think that it didn't live up to the expectation for me, but it was still really good. Finally, it was time to go back to the Kirby Cafe and my Kerr Burger was done, which it was so cute. It had these little hash brown stars with it. And yeah, it was not that good, but it was supposed to be cute, so. This might be one of my favorite places that we visited in Japan. I found it on TikTok and it's called Hat Coffee. They do very, very intense latte art. They use essentially this little cup of espresso as well as a cup of foam. And then I don't know what the like brown powder is, but they draw very intricate images in either 2D or 3D of whatever you want. You know, obviously we had to get Mochi and Goblin on the lattes. Obviously we had to see the Shinjuku cat. We were actually staying in Shinjuku, which I ended up really, really liking. It's at a very busy intersection and I felt bad because we were just standing there looking at the cat. Another day trip that we took was to Enoshima, which we ate a lot of yummy food. As soon as you get off the train, you just have to walk across to the island and there are so many places to eat and shop and also a temple. Noshima is known to have great seafood, so the first thing we went to try was this place that does these octopus crackers. You just get your two little cards and you go up and you get them, and they are absurdly delicious. I really like them. And the soda was amazing. Anything melon is the best. After that, I really wanted to try this barbecue squid, which again, 10 out of 10. I know I'm saying all the food is good, but it was just good, except for that sea urchin, but to each their own with that, I guess. There are a few cat islands in Japan, but we did not get to go to one this trip, but I did see this little guy and he was precious and I wish I could take him home, but he probably is having more fun being here. <laughs> checked out Ginza, which was very cool, very crowded. We wanted to go to Itoya. Itoya, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it is a stationary store that is like six floors and has so much stuff and is really, really packed. I was super overwhelmed while I was in here, so I didn't film a ton. Our one fancy dinner that we really had wanted to do was Ginza Steak, which is an all-you-can-eat uh, five-star Wagyu restaurant. We don't eat a ton of fancy course meals i don't know <laughs> but this was really really good although i think that i cannot handle wagyu and the fat content because i got really really sick after that was not good but it tasted absolutely delicious and the chef was amazing i think this was pokemon center number three and this one was definitely my favorite this is the xd store which i believe is the main one and they had plushies of just about everything will couldn't find the ones that he wanted but i got a spoink now to my favorite thing in japan is the cat cafes but specifically the mocha ones if you're ever in japan you want to go to a cat cafe go to this one go to this branch mocha see the little tree logo memorize it this place is really awesome. They take such amazing care of the cats. You can tell that they're all really happy. If they don't wanna be social, there are places for them to go off to and be away from people. 
You can tell that all the employees have great relationship with the cats. And yeah, they're basically in every major city in Japan. I don't know, don't quote me on that, but I went to three different other locations. This was a little flea market that we went to and I got some really old postcards that were awesome and Will got a crazy vintage lighter. We visited the Meiji Jingu shrine and we were actually able to catch a wedding, which was really lucky with the timing. I didn't film it obviously to be respectful to the people getting married, but there were a lot of people filming it, so it probably wouldn't have made a difference. We also had to hit up Akihabara because I had heard a lot about there being lots of Yu-Gi-Oh cards there, which Will wanted to look at, and a bunch of retro video games as well. They had literally everything you could imagine, and for very fair prices. I got an old copy of Rhythm Heaven, a game that I liked as a kid, but it's really hard to get a hold of it in the US nowadays. This place was by far the best takoyaki I've ever had. I had it in Osaka and Tokyo, and this place absolutely cleared. We were able to catch a limited time Apex Museum pop-up, which was super cool. They had a lot of characters, heirlooms, and a cool gift shop. <laughs> now onto the Shiba Cafe, which I was so, so excited for, but it kind of made me sad in the end because Shiba Inus, which I should know, are not necessarily the most social animals. And I kind of felt bad for them because it seemed like a lot of them didn't want to socialize and they were kind of forced to, but listen, it was still really cute and there were a lot of uh, bait behaviors such as this. For anybody potentially new to this channel, I have a mommy Shiba Inu. And so, yeah, um, I was very, used to this very normal behavior you're seeing. Now, Kyoto, Will, and I had both gotten sick by this point. We both had a really bad cold, but I was still going out and making the best of it. This was kind of near the Geisha district, which was probably one of my favorite places in Japan. It was so beautiful. Although it's not cherry blossom season yet, I still got to see a few. And yes, you know I went to the cat cafes in Kyoto as well. days in Kyoto, I went to Arashiyama, which was beautiful, and I got to see the bamboo forest as well as hike up to a little shrine and see that as well, although I didn't get any video, sorry. The funniest thing that probably happened to me in Japan was hearing this on my walk. I know that bark from anywhere. I know exactly what type of dog that comes from. And you guessed it, I found the culprit. It was a Shiba. Now onto another place that was definitely one of my favorites in Japan, which was the Kobe Animal Kingdom. We got to meet and pet and feed capybaras and also see so many other animals. It was amazing. And not a lot of them are in cages, right? Like they just have these rooms where you can see them and interact with them. If you're an animal lover, you definitely have to go to this place. It's about an hour via train from Osaka, and it was definitely one of the highlights. They even had two palace cats, which were just one of the many species of animals I had never seen in real life. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. I'm going to include some pictures of some things that I didn't take videos of so y'all can see.